Today, I, I want us to go into emotions. And so interestingly enough, emotions are the thing that control our actions. And actions obviously then control what it is we're able to create. And so if you reverse engineer, we have actions that create result. Actions are 100% influenced by how we feel. But our feelings are actually something that's been coded into us. And, and that's interesting. We don't go around changing how we feel very often. In fact, most of us live the same sort of set point, the same feeling. And, and we don't know any different. That's just how we feel. So we just think it's normal to feel a certain way. But there are so many different ways to feel, so many different, uh, very small nuances between different feelings, different emotions. But the emotion is what drives drives our our outcome. Now, what happens is because our brain is wired for safety and survival, anything that threatens safety and survival, the unconscious puts a, a emotion that we, we've labeled a negative emotion. It puts a negative emotion attached to it. It's basically a warning sign or a signal. Does that make sense? It's a warning sign or a signal. So for example, someone's in their forties and they can't make cold calls. You know, that's weird. Why can't you make a cold call? And, and you realize it's because of the emotion. They, they don't want to just be disruptive. They don't want, um, they don't want to be judged. They don't want uh, to be rejected. It doesn't make sense. You're ringing up to, to help someone. And so it doesn't make sense. However, when they were, you know, eight years old, they were, they were laughed at um, for, for asking someone to, to do something or to ask someone out on a, a date or hand deliver a rose or, or something sweet. And they were laughed at. And what they did is they coded up uh, a, negative act, a negative emotion all the way back then. And that's what's holding us back now. And I want you to hear this because a lot of times we, we make the negative emotion the bad guy. Does that make sense? Or the bad girl. But the truth is, and I want you to really hear this and I want you to write it down, is that there's no such thing as a negative emotion. Not from the body's perspective anyway. Does that make sense? There's no such thing as a negative emotion. All of them are positive because even that emotion that's stopping making the cold call, it's really there to say, hey, let's not get rejected. And so the truth is, and, and I want you to hear this, all emotions are just unconscious communication. All emotions are just the unconscious communicating with you to say, hey, warning, hey, that's not good. Don't do that. We've had pain there before. And so the body remembers. And it's very, very, very interesting that sometimes people get, you know, paralyzed or they, you know, paralyzed in fear. They can't take action. They can't do something. And so they're banging their head against the wall trying to do something. Why can't I do something simple like ring a business and ask them to buy something like it's not a very difficult thing when you think about it. You're just talking to a human being. And the truth is, is that they've got this completely crazy, erroneous um, emotional system that's just gone haywire. And it's taken them miles out of what's true. And so just recently, I was working with someone just last week. And, and that's why this is on top of my brain. So I'm saying, hey, you know, you need to bring and, and do some sales you, and start up business and business sell stuff. And the emotional reaction to selling was like, it was like I'd asked this person um, to, to walk down the street and like, you know, punch someone in the face or something like that. It was such a, uh, the, it was like, that would be the worst thing, horrible thing, you know, can't do that. And so I just want you to play this through in your head, right? I then, you know, asked this person, I said, you know, do you believe in your product is going to help people? Yeah, I do. Do you believe it's a good price? Yeah, I do. Do you believe it's this? Yeah, I do. So what's stopping you just ringing and asking someone to buy it? Well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be like that. Da, 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 da. But you want to be successful in business as well, don't you? Yeah, well, I want that. And so can everyone just understand this, this unmovable structure that was created? I want to be successful in business. I've got a good product, but I'm not willing to talk to people. But there's a, and that it's completely illogical. True, completely illogical. And so sometimes we have all these emotions that are just, they're just running the show, and we haven't got them sorted out. And and I see this happen a lot of times. You know, we've been 
let down or we've been abandoned we've been you know rejected or you know we've done something wrong we've been scolded or told off and, and the worst ones are the ones we don't really know why and they just kind of they're there but the emotion doesn't know why and it's unresolved now what's true is that and tell me if this is true you've all experienced uh, a child getting getting it wrong right and you've wanted to then coach them and try to help them out that it's not that much of a big deal however to the child it's a big deal and have you also all experienced that time where you think someone said something and you get all mad at them and that you realize they didn't have, they didn't say that or they didn't have that intention at all. Type in a yes if that's ever happened to you, where you you think they've said something or you think they had some sort of intention. You get all mad, you get all worked up, and then oh 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 sorry, and you've completely got it wrong. See that's what's happened to us. You see, we we're just that little child that didn't know. No one no one helped us get it right. We just got it wrong. And so what we do is we, we say, because that, you know, that group of girls rejected us, we, you know, we're, we're not good enough, we're not cool enough or, and so then we hold on to that for a long time, but we've forgotten about it because it's unconscious or because I asked her out for a date and she said, no, because I, you know, I peed my pants in front of the kid, the, the class or, or whatever it is. And we hold on to these, but we don't remember them. And, and the interesting thing is, is a lot of times the behaviors that we're being asked or, or wanting to do now are unworkable with some of our old emotions. And so sometimes we just need to get in there and rework them, erase them, and, and basically just let them go, you know, let them go. See, we, uh, we keep on recreating what's safe. I need you to understand this. We keep recreating what's safe. And so that emotion has been placed there so that we don't go and experience what our body has, has deemed to be a risk to our survival. I really want you to understand this because this will allow your brain to let it go. Is if reject, rejection uh, is a risk to our belonging of a certain group, we're going to put an emotion there to not get rejected. If there's been judgment cast towards a certain group, we're going to put emotions or things there so that we don't go there because it's a risk. And so what I want you to really understand about all emotions is that they were created by you. They were created by you. No one else. They were created by you. True. They were created by you and they were created with a positive intention. At some point in your history, there was a positive intention. Sometimes they were to stop you going back into a hurtful situation so you don't go there again. Sometimes they were there to protect you, but they were there with a positive intention. And so we, also, we almost need to thank them, you know. There's a story of uh, Japanese World War II soldiers who 10 years after the, the, the war ended, they kept on finding these soldiers because they were out there on solo missions with no contact with the uh, with the Japanese, you know, army. And so even ten years after the the, um, the war had ended, they'd find they'd find these guys. They'd be like shooting at people, and they thought the war was still on. And so what they found is they they obviously had to relieve these these men um, of their their posts. But it was a pretty, um, pretty intense thing to let them know that they'd wasted 10 years out there by themselves, you know, fighting this fight. And so what they did is they went and found them and, and got them and whenever they'd come across them and they'd bring them back to a hero's welcome and say, thank you so much for fighting this good fight for us, even, even way longer than was needed, but thank you so much gave them a huge hero's welcome, congratulated them, given them a medal, and then sent them on their way. And it's an interesting thing because a lot of our emotions are like that. A lot of our, a lot of our limiting emotions are like that. They've been fighting this war that's been over for a long time. 
You know, maybe we didn't have the strength to stand up to him. Maybe we didn't have the strength to stand up to her. Maybe we didn't have the strength to speak for ourselves then, but it's just not the truth now. Does that make sense? It's just not the truth now. And so what I find sometimes is, is we're still, we're still carrying protection emotions that are just not needed for our current capability. Does that make sense? And they definitely don't belong in our future. Yeah. The past, they're used by dates, the past, they're used by dates. However, we've never just looked at them and put them down. You know, I've never said, hey, wow, I needed that when I was four. I needed that when I was 10. I needed that when I was 17. I needed that when I was 21. I needed that then. But I, I can handle that now, you know. And so it's interesting to look at it like this because you're in control. The way that any emotion lasts or gets there first is that it's programmed by the conscious brain. Okay, we program we program these emotions consciously, just like we programmed ourselves to drive the car, right? So we all can drive the car automatically now, but first we had to program it. Now the body's just taken over. Now think about how weird that is. The body or the unconscious is literally just taken over driving. You don't even have to think about it, but you will move. You will, and when you move, your body is so good. If you know how, if you're driving manual, your body will move, your foot will go down, your other foot will come off the accelerator. You'll even hit the indicator, you'll look in your mirror, you might even change the gear down. Just think about all the things that happen without you thinking. Isn't that incredible? I think it's pretty incredible. But the truth is, is that we actually trained our body to be able to do that. We trained it. And then through repetition, the body took over and said, you can think about other things now. And that's what we've done here. With a lot of these emotions, We've trained the body to be a certain way, just like we train it to drive a car. And then the brain can go off and think about other things. And so these emotions, everyone, are just rolling on autopilot. Type in ES if you get that. It's just autopilot. You're not thinking about them. You trained it. You're just going. It's autopilot. And what we need to do is we need to come in and interrupt them. We need to let them go, and then we need to start training the body in a new way, in a new way, in a new way, so that we can actually achieve what we want, right? And so we're going to have some fun today, and uh, and you guys are all going to enjoy it. So let's um let's get in and let's just do a little bit of a structure process here. So I want to ask you all, what is it that uh, what is it that you would like to achieve? And type in, just type in an end result that pops into your mind. What's an end goal or end result that you would like to, uh, to achieve? Yeah, cool, cool. Type it in. What's an end goal that you would like to achieve? What's a goal? Just anyone. It doesn't actually matter which one you choose. Type it in, write it down, or give me a yes or a thumbs up if you've done it. Awesome. 10 more clients, complete your certification. Have health and vitality. Nice. What else? Cool. Confidence. Nice. So if you think about that goal, and let's assume that you have it right now, how would it feel? Nice. Two new staff all initiated and rocking. Nice. You feel free. Beautiful. Say you have that goal. How would you feel? Feel free. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Reward it. Nice. Happy, free, rewarded, connected. Beautiful. Beautiful. Energized and happy. Okay, cool. So compared to that, compared to that, what is your current reality? Don't be negative. Just be real. What's your current reality compared to that? 
So you just have one client, you have no staff initiated, you need more staff. What's the current reality compared to that? Working towards it, nice. Nice, what's your current reality? Interviewing, optimistic. Yeah, nice, good one, good one. Couple of clients, good, good. And so having this experience of your current reality, you know, how, how does it feel? Feels exciting. The current reality compared to the future reality. Does it feel exciting? Frustrating, difficult, slow. Good, I'm glad. Awesome, exciting is good. Exciting is good. Cool. So we'll just, uh, we'll just do a quick uh, understanding of our, of our next most obvious step, okay? So I'll get you to, in a second, you'll close your eyes, go into the end result, come back and, uh, and let's get the next step so we can, we can understand exactly what's going on. So go, just go ahead and close your eyes for a second. And just step into that future result, that result you wrote down, that end goal. Just notice what you've achieved. Notice how it feels. Now look back over time to your current reality. So look back towards your current reality. See what it was like way back there in the present day. What was the obvious next step that you had to take in order to move from there to here? When you've got the answer, open your eyes, type it in or write it down. When you've got the answer. Believe in yourself. Cool. Clarity on role descriptions. Nice. Get out more. Connect with the world. Make offers. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Nice. 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 So when you look at that, you've got your end result over here, you've got your, your current reality, and then you should have what the next step is. Hey bud, saw you just jumped on. Saw you just jumped on. Might not make sense jumping on this time, but enjoy it. What is that next step? Okay, and once you've got that, here's what I wanna ask. Here's what I wanna ask. What reservations or stories do you have about that next step? Why haven't you done it already? Why have you held it off? What are your stories? Like it's, it's obvious that you should do that. You probably should have done it before. Okay. So what's been your reservation? What's held you back? I don't have enough time. I, I mean, this, I, I don't know what to do. I'm scared of this. What's the story that you have? Because a smart person like you has probably known that this was the next step for a long time. So go on, be brave. What was, what's the story? What's been holding you back? What's the reservation?
Confusion, my story is confusion. Okay, good. What's the reservation? Let's hear from some people. Type on and let's go. Awesome. Scared of being bored. Yeah, nice. Nice. Scared of rejection. Should have been bolder. Fear rejection. Beautiful. Beautiful. So now you've put down some reservations. The next question I have for you is, is what inner conflicts do you have about making this next step? You know, part of me wants to go in and get the role descriptions and hire the staff, but part of me doesn't want to let go of control. Part of me wants to, what are they? I don't know. I'm just making these up. I'm just trying to get your brain going. Part of me wants to go out there and make the sales and make money, but part of me is is scared that I'll look stupid. What 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 are your um what are your inner conflicts? Well, part of me thinks I should do it. Part of me thinks it's not a priority. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough this. Cool. Let's, what are your inner conflicts about this? Good. Good. Excuses to not be doing what I'm meant to be doing, which actually scares the fuck out of me. Yep. What are you meant to be doing? Yep. Yep. So part of me is like, well, what if it doesn't even work? Yeah, I like it. Good, good. <laughs> I'm glad I asked too. <laughs> What are your judgments about this step, guys? How do you judge this next action step? How do you judge it? Oh, I want to go be a speaker, but, you know, uh, the people that get out there and speak are just, you know, blah, 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 blah. What, I want to go start my business. Yeah, nice. Hey, by the way, you guys can change it from all panelists to all attendees or back. If you don't want people to see what you're writing or not, you can just change it to panelists if you just want me to see it. Most of you are. Um, but just so you guys know, it's always cool for everyone else to see that, that everyone's interacting. So what are your judgments about this? How do you judge yourself? When you think about this next step, how do you judge yourself, right? How do you judge the world? If it comes easy, I've done it wrong. That's an interesting one. I'm not bold enough, I need permission. Critical, should have made these changes before. Haven't earned the right, even though I have. Hmm. Interesting. We're interesting creatures, aren't we? Okay, so we're going to have some fun with this. We're going to have some fun. So there'll be one core feeling that underlines this the most. I'm going to read them out. And then I want you to choose the one that matches how you're feeling about this emotion the most. Okay. So I'll read them out first. And then you're going to choose which one is the right one. Okay. So the first one is I'm unworthy. So I'm unworthy. I don't feel worthy of this end result. Therefore, I won't take the step because I'm actually unworthy of having this big end result that I'm after. I'm unworthy. The next is, I'm not enough. You know, I, I'm not enough. So I don't know enough. I'm not good enough. I have, I'm not experienced enough. I'm not, I, I, I'm not enough to have that. I don't deserve it. Next one, I don't belong. So I'm not like those sort of people. I'm not like that. I don't belong like that. I, I'm scared of judgment. I'm scared of rejection. If I do that, I'm going to uh, people are going to judge me. They're going to reject me. And I'm not going to belong to the tribe anymore. I'm insignificant. 
I'm not big enough to do that. I'm insignificant. I can't be like that. I'm insignificant. Next one, I don't have the capacity. So I'm overwhelmed. I don't have the capacity. I'm overwhelmed. I can't do all this. I'm completely overwhelmed. I don't have the capacity. I need to be perfect. So I'm not going to do that because I can't get it wrong. I got to be perfect. I can't get it wrong. So let me read them out. You're going to choose one. I'm unworthy. I'm not good enough. I don't belong. I'm insignificant. I don't have the capacity or I need to be perfect. Go. Pick one. Pick one. We can only work on one at a time. <laughs> Everyone's like, just one? <laughs> just one. It doesn't even matter if it's the right one. So people have got the perfect thing and they're going, oh, what if I get the wrong one? <laughs> I'm not good enough at sorting this out, Chris. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Go on, type it in. Cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. Anyone um, not think that there are any of those? <laughs> yeah, that's the right one, David. Yep. That's just that's just the right one. Yeah, it's he's only picked just one. <laughs> it's funny as. For those of you who aren't on Zoom, David just wrote them all in one uh, sentence without a space, so he can be all of them. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Awesome. 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 Okay. So now that we've, um, we've done that, what, what we're going to do. And so, so I want you to, I want you to know and, uh, and to feel good that this underlying feeling that you created is the feeling that is stopping you to move forward. You see, and so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a, uh, a process. It's going to be an imaginary process. And um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting, but I want to ask you all and, you know, Bud, feel free to join in on any of these. I know you jumped in um, halfway through. Well, feel free to just, just chill out and watch. I know it's your first time um, on this call, but um, yeah, cool, cool. Ty type in, you know, between one and 10, um, right now, when you think about that as an emotion, you know, how much you feel like it's stopping you at the moment. Cool. So we're going to do um, a little bit of a closed eye process and you're just going to make it up. Okay. How it's going to work is you're going to make up a scenario that you think could have happened. It's made up that you think could have happened that would have first created this experience. Okay. And so just trust me and just listen to the uh, meditation and we'll go through it and we'll see just what happens. So go ahead and close your eyes. Close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, I want you just to grow yourself younger. And I want you to grow yourself younger and grow yourself younger and grow yourself younger all the way back until you're sitting in a cinema you're sitting in a cinema as a young boy, as a young girl, and you're sitting there and you're all excited. You're all excited to see what's going to be played at the movie theater. 
And then as soon as you know it's time for the movie, right? As soon as it's time, everyone hushes and the movie's about to start. There's those normal endings. And all of a sudden, you're transported into the movie. And all of a sudden, you're the lead character of this movie. And this movie, very interestingly, is you playing out how it is that you decided to have that emotion, how you decided to not belong. And it, it could be a true scenario. It could be something that you make up. But I want you just to imagine that you're stepping into a movie right now of you creating that emotion. And just notice how it plays out. Who are the characters that help you to create this emotion? What happens? What do they say to you? What do you say to you? And go ahead and just act it out. Be a part of it and act it out. Just do the best you can. That's it. And as you act it out, right to the end, I want you to notice that you're at the end because you can feel the feeling. You can feel that feeling of not good enough or scared of not belonging or scared of, I can't handle all of this, that overwhelm, not capable. Just feel that feeling. And as soon as you feel the feeling, I want you to jump out of the movie and back into the seat. And as you're in the seat, I want you just to experience what it's like to feel that feeling as you watch it up in the movie. That's it. And it's one of those old movie theaters where the projector's right up the back. And now you can transport yourself back into the projector booth. Just imagine the best you can. You're going to have to imagine that you can imagine this. You're all the way back in the projector booth. And from back here in the projector booth, you can see yourself in the theater and then you can see the movie, which is also you. Go ahead and press rewind. And you're going to rewind the movie right back to the start. That's it, you're doing great. Just imagine you can do it. As soon as you rewind it back to the start, you're going to transport yourself right into the movie again. And this time, you're going to go through the exact same scene. However, as you go through, when you get to the end, you're going to notice that the whole screen just whites out. You just white out the whole screen. And follow along with my voice as the screen whites out. You follow it back into the cinema, looking at the movie, and then back into the projector booth. That's it. And as you're back here in the projector booth, you're going to rewind that movie again all the way back to the front. That's it. As you get back to the front, you jump back into the movie and you go through the movie again right to the end. And when you get to the end, you're going to go ahead and you're just going to white out the whole movie. And we're going to repeat this a few times, back into the cinema, seeing yourself, and then back into the projector booth. And from here, back in the projector booth, you have all the controls to start changing everything in this movie. And so when you jump back into it this time, it's a different color completely. The accents are different, change everything about this movie, go through to the end, and then just white it out. And I want you just to go back and forth, back and forth in this same movie until you can't feel that feeling anymore because you've just whited it out like an eraser, just whiting it out. As you do that a few times, you'll notice it's actually difficult to access the emotion at all. As you jump back into the cinema, back into the projector booth. Now you're back here and I know that we're moving fast. I'd like you to float up above, just float up, just imagine you float up above the cinema and turn towards your past. Now float all the way back, 
right back. You're just going to float all the way back and you're going to be looking down at events in your life. And then you're going to notice there's one that really sticks out. And you don't know why, but you're there. This one that sticks out is the root cause. It's the reason why you decided on this emotion. It's the reason why. And notice that it's there. Now, you may see an event. You may know you're there, or you may just see nothing. Either way, it's just perfect. That's it. Now, ask your unconscious, what is there to learn from this emotion? The positive learning will allow you to release the emotion easily and effortlessly. Remember, it's just like that time when, you know, you thought someone said something, but they didn't. Now, your unconscious mind can preserve the learning so that you, if you need them in the future, they'll be there. But just go ahead and accept it. Just go ahead and accept that there's something positive here. There's something positive to learn about this. You see, every single one of these is positive. It's positive. That's it. Now float back to the release position. So go right up above this before this. Look towards now and ask yourself, where is the emotion? Is it there or it's just gone? And I want to ask you, what would you like to believe instead? What would you like to believe instead? And it's time to change this. So instead of I am unworthy, there's nothing that would make me more or less worthy. I'm just me. I'm not good enough. There is nothing that makes me good enough or bad enough. I'm just me. I don't belong. I always, there's no way to belong more or less. I'm insignificant. There's no way to be insignificant. I don't have the capacity. I have all the capacity to do everything I need. I need to be perfect. I just need to be in action and be me. And I want you just to take a positive belief. And once you do, just go ahead and decide on that. Just go ahead and decide on it. And now that you've decided it, just pick one which will give you a better result in your future. Now that you've picked that, float back down, back down and back forward. And just ask yourself, how much better does it feel now? And as you're floating forward through your life, I just want you to notice that you float right back into a projector booth at the back of a movie. And this time you sit down at the movie theater and on the screen, it's the same characters, but they're playing a different movie. It's you. It's you as a kid. It's you as a kid with this new belief, this new feeling, this new emotion. What would your childhood be like if you always knew you were worthy? What would it be like if it was good enough? It's, you're never, it's never too late to create a fresh, happy childhood. What would it be like if you knew you belonged? What would it be like if you knew you had the capacity? What if you, what if you knew that everything about you is already perfect? And just notice what it would be like and notice how that feels. How would that feel? And as soon as you feel it, I just want you to notice how good it is because it's good, right? It's good and it's true. It's true and float into the movie, experience it for yourself, seeing it through your own eyes, hearing it with your own ears, breathing with your own lungs. I want you to feel what it's like to be truly worthy, to be truly enough, to already know that you're perfect in every single way, to know that you're loved, you can't do anything more or less to belong, to know all of these things, to know you're completely capable. What would it feel like to completely know that to be true and experience it? truly experience it what would it like to absolutely know that to be true how would it feel what would it be like to know you're capable of everything you want that you're truly worthy as soon as you've already decided that you are And if you have, and if it feels good, I want you to start growing yourself older, noticing the different events and how they change and shift between then all the way to now. And so float back to now all the way back only as quickly as you can continue to notice 
the changes and that everything has disappeared relating to that old emotion. And when you get back to now, now you're here, you can come back, you can open your eyes and let me know how that was. How was that? Good. <laughs> Good. Great. Love this so much. Totally loved it. Huge one for me. Great learning. Really good. Good feedback. So just for a second, just imagine, imagine your future. Just imagine your future and just notice how it's different now. Is it different or is it the same? Good. <laughs> it's a good thing so here's my question when you think about that old emotion that we started with one to ten how much do you think it's going to affect you in the future cool so so here's what I want you to do this week is we need to recode our emotions. We need to step into our new way. Look at those coming down. Four, three, two, a one. We need to step into this new way. So the, the, the number one meditation I want you to focus on this week, there's actually, there's two there's a, a whiteout. Oh, let me just make sure I get the right names. But give me some feedback just so I get you the right names for the uh, meditation. How do you guys feel? It's been good to see quite a few of you write in. Less than before. Good. <laughs> See, our, uh, our emotional set point has to shift, has to. We have to shift it. So I'd like you to do the, um, the emotional flood meditation. The emotional flood, can everyone type that in for me so that they remember? The emotional flood meditation that's in the meditation hub. So I'd like you to do that one this week. And I would love, I would love you to do the belief repatterning. Now I know it's actually there it is. There it is. Week four, remove negative emotions. So I'd like you to do the remove negative emotions. So remove negative emotions. That's in the weekly training. It's week four and the emotional flood. Yeah. Ah, I was interested at the end point. It was pride. Didn't expect that. Thanks, David. Thanks for typing in. This process was really alien to me before, but doing it a few times made results much stronger. Oh, good. Good to hear. Here's my prayer to you this week. I haven't heard from all of you. So if you haven't typed in, type in. My prayer for you this week, my desire for you this week is to condition yourself to a new emotion. And I just want you to work on that that one, the opposite one of what you're just working on. So if you've, if you've got the emotion of I'm not good enough, I just want you to 
work on teaching your body that you are and you can do that and, and understanding and looking at it but your body's gonna gonna not want to accept it and that's okay but remember who's in control your body's just being trained by you does this make sense your body's being trained and so this week, if you do your emotional flood meditation and every day you flood and you flood your body with new emotions and you just go at it, you just go at to feel this new way and you really go for it. I promise every single one of you, one of the biggest things I ever did was to finally put down the feeling that I wasn't good enough. When I finally just said, oh, I'm good enough right now, and I'm just going to feel good enough right now. Guess what started to show up in my life? Good enough things. <laughs> Everything. And it was a huge deal for me. Huge. And so I, I just totally desire to, to have you guys feel that. So we're going to finish on. We're going to finish with a little meditation to feel a certain way. Yeah, true. <laughs> you will. You will. I mean, it's just science. <laughs> so do do this. Go ahead and just let's just do one. Co close your eyes. Just go ahead and just close your eyes for a second. And I want you just to step into the end result that you're 100% good enough, that you're 100% worthy, that you 100% belong, that you're 100% powerful and capable and, and everything right now is perfect as it needs to be. Your everything is just the way you want. I just want you to step into that now and just ask yourself the open-ended question. What would it be like? What would it feel like to be like this? What would it feel like to feel 100% confident in my abilities? What would it feel like to just be 100% worthy? What would it feel like to just be 100% good enough just to know deep down that you are? And just take whatever feeling now and just start to make it bigger. That's it. And take it and go bigger. Go, I am worthy. I am good enough. And it feels good. Doesn't it feel good just to be good enough? And you can trick your brain. Just what, what, wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice to feel this? Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice just to do this? Hmm. It was really good. You guys feel good. All right, come back to me, open your eyes. So that's that's as simple and as quick as it can be. Just quick question with that last little that last little meditation there, that last little refocus. How did you guys feel? Did you feel like you can get into it better? Did you feel like you can go there? Because just let me know, did you feel like you can go there? Because the truth is, is your inability to be able to get into the feeling of I'm good enough is a direct reflection of your inability to be able to manifest anything that makes you yeah, got it, got there a lot easier. Great job, Swap. Your inability to be able to get there or, or to stay there is the direct reflection of, of why the goals are so hard. Does that make sense? Because we've set up our goal situation to say, when I have this, I'll feel this way. So we have to start feeling this way. Might be hard to sleep. That's all right. It was great. Anchored it too. Awesome. And, and that's the truth because we have this, we have this gap. And we need to take our feeling of, of the person who we're going to be and feel it now and teach us to be it now because then we are the end. Then we, we step into it like, wow, cool, here's my life because you are it. Does that make sense? <laughs> cool. And so that's that's what we do, okay? The emotional flood. I think it's like a five-minute video, though, not, not two minutes, just going into it and just really letting yourself get there. You might have work to do. You might have work to do. It's likely that you do. And so all you've got to do is realize that if I don't go from this person to this person, this person will never show up. I have to create him and her, and I have to do it now.